All right, so in this video, we're going to define degrees and radians, and then in the next video, we'll talk about how to convert between them. So um, it's, it's kind of hard to define what a degree really is, but it's, uh, it's easier to talk about in terms of circles. So we don't have to have circles in the picture to deal with degrees, but it's easier just to define them that way. So there are 360 degrees in a full circle. Um, now, this, uh, first of all, the symbol here, that's a superscript circle. Uh, it's not the letter O, it's not a zero, it's nothing like that. It's just a symbol that denotes degrees. So just like uh, if you say 12 meters, this M is for meters, or 10 feet, uh, this FT is for feet. So it's pretty much the same thing. The superscript circle is for degrees. Okay, now um, let's just see, let's just think about this here. So if we have our circle here. Uh, it doesn't matter how big the circle is. In other words, it doesn't matter what the radius is. Okay, the radius could be about this size. It could be really tiny. It could be really huge. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, the point is, uh, no matter how big your circle is, as far as the radius goes, uh, there are 360 degrees in the entire circle. So if we start over here, or anywhere really, on the circle, and just trace it out one complete revolution. Okay, so go out one complete revolution. Uh, that's 360 degrees. Okay, so that's uh, some other units there. So 360 degrees is uh, one revolution. So that's a uh, one revolution. And uh, revolution is usually abbreviated rev, R-E-V. <clears throat> so it's not a really common unit of measurement. I guess it depends on the application, but it's uh, abbreviated R-E-V, and it shows up often enough that it's worth mentioning. And also, uh, you could talk about it in terms of rotation. So this is one full rotation or sometimes just called one rotation. Okay, so 360 degrees in a full circle, or one revolution, or a rev for short, or one full rotation, or just a rotation. Okay, so just a little side note there, because these units of measurement, they, they do show up every now and then, so it's worth pointing out. But anyway, um, so if there are 360 degrees in a full circle, then if you think about it, uh, one degree is probably going to be pretty tiny, right? So let's zoom in and see what one degree might look like. So I'm actually not going to be able to accurately draw because it's so small, but let's draw one degree in standard position. So that remember from the last video, standard position, vertex at the origin, and uh, initial side is the positive x-axis. So one degree is really, really super tiny. I mean, even tinier than how I drew it. So it's, it's just so small, it's just really hard to draw. But uh, even though this is really not to scale, it still kind of illustrates the point that one degree is very small. Okay, so 360 degrees in a full circle, uh, one degree, so if this opens up like that, uh, one degree, okay, that's what that is, one degree, it's really, really super tiny. Okay, so that's the point here. Um, and that's really it for degrees, there's not a whole lot else to say. We'll talk more about them in later videos um, when we talk about other applications and things like that. Uh, so there are a lot of applications in trig that use degrees. Um, but likewise, there are also a lot that use radians, and radians is the other, uh, another common type of measurement for angles. Okay, and just like with degrees, with radians, uh, it's all going to be the same, so it just measures a rotation, so it doesn't matter how big or how small the circle is. And again, you don't even need to have a circle in the picture to be talking about it. So you could be talking about angles without circles at all. Okay. So uh, let's erase this here and we'll start talking about radians. So if you're wondering um, where this 360 degrees comes from, so why, why are there 360 degrees in a full circle? Where did that come from? Uh, why not some other number? Nobody really knows for sure. Um, so some of the common theories uh, are related to uh, ancient astronomy and the length of the calendar year, things like that. Um, we don't want to get too hung up on that here, but if you're interested, you could check out the Wikipedia page for degrees. Um, the angle measurement degrees, check that out, and then they have a good uh, section there about the history and some of the common theories as to why we have 360 degrees in a circle. <clears throat> okay, so now we want to talk about radians, but before that we have to talk about central angles. So uh, a central angle is a positive angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. Okay, so let's draw what that would look like. So let's say we have a circle here, okay, and then um, let's put a vertex in here at the center, so we'll just pretend that's a circle. Uh, and then here and here. So if the angle opens up this way, it's going to be a positive angle. Because okay. remember, counterclockwise is the positive direction. 
So uh, we have a radius r, radius r, we have that angle. So what we're going to do, we're going to call this angle, so I'm going to erase this orientation here. So we know it's going to be a positive angle, so I'm going to call that theta. So uh, that's Greek letter, lowercase uh, theta. Okay. Um, that's a Greek letter, it's lowercase. It's commonly used to denote angles in trig. Uh, there are a few other commonly used ones. So I guess uh, since we're talking about theta, let's talk about those other ones right now. So that's uh, another one is uh, alpha. So that's our lowercase alpha. Here's beta. So that's like a curly V with a little tail on it. So that's uh, beta. And then uh, gamma, which is kind of like a strange hybrid between uh, an R and a Y, I guess. Uh, but anyway, that's gamma. Okay, so alpha, beta, gamma, and theta, those are the most commonly used Greek letters to denote angles. Uh, some textbooks and some instructors don't really like to use uh, Greek letters. They might use capital uh, Latin letters like A, B, C, D, and so on, things like that. Um, anyway, just want to point these out because you may come across these in your trig studies or you might already know what they are, but just in case, uh, here they are. Uh, just to be thorough, we should point them out. So alpha, beta, gamma, and theta. Of course, there are other Greek letters. Some, some of them might be used, but these are the more common ones. Okay, so anyway, um, back to central angles. So central angle is a positive angle whose vertex is the center of a circle. So we have this uh, central angle theta right here. Okay, so that's theta. Um, and the circle has radius r. And then there's another definition related to this that we have to talk about. Uh, we say that theta, uh, theta subtends in arc of length s. Okay. So the arc that's subtended by that angle is uh, this, this arc right here. Okay, so if we zoom in on that, so theta, we'll get rid of that up here. So theta subtends an arc of length s. So the length of this arc that's subtended, okay, subtended by theta is s. Okay, so we say that uh, theta subtends an arc of length s, or alternatively, we could say uh, an arc of length s is subtended by the central angle theta. Okay, so just some more definitions there. So theta subtends an arc of length s. So the central angle theta subtends an arc of length s. Or an arc of length s is subtended by the central angle theta. Okay. Uh, some people kind of use these backwards. Like they might say uh, the arc subtends the angle theta. Um, I think it's more common the other way, but it doesn't really matter, I guess, as long as you know what you're talking about. Um, as, as long as anybody else knows what you're talking about, too. But I think the more common way is like this. So theta subtends the arc and the arc is subtended by theta. Okay, so anyway, um, this uh, s and r and theta, that's going to come up a little bit later um, when we talk about radians in general. But for now, just know these here. Okay. So now that we have that, we can talk about how to define one radian. So that's central angles, and then subtends and subtended by uh, three letters. So now let's talk about radians, now that we have that uh, background there. So let's say we have a circle. Okay. And um, it doesn't matter how big the circle is, so it's going to have a radius, just some radius r. Okay, it could be 1, it could be uh, a million, it could be 100,000, 27.2, it doesn't really matter. Just uh, some radius r. Okay. So let's say um, the circle has radius r, so now what we're going to do is we're going to trace a path on the circle, and the length of this path, or in other words, the length of this arc, is going to be equal to r. Okay, so we're going to trace out an arc of length r, which is the radius uh, on the circle. So let's erase these. So we're going to say that this arc that we just traced out, let's say that has length r. Okay? And then what we're going to do is connect the end of this arc here that we just made back to the center of the circle. Okay, so what do we just draw? We just drew another radius. Okay, it's worth pointing out, but not terribly relevant, I guess, but it's good to point out. Okay? So what's the important thing that we just did here? Um, or what, what did we just do, really? We just made an angle, right? We just made an angle right here. Okay. We just made an angle. And this angle that we just made is uh, one radian. Okay, one radian. 
So what did we just do again? Um, well, we had the circle with radius r, and the, the important thing that we did here is we traced out a path on the circle, and the length of this path is r the same as the radius. So the length of this path that we traced out is the same as the radius. Okay? Now the angle that made is equal to one radian. And what's cool about that is no matter what the radius is, that's always going to be the same. So whether r is this big, whether it's super tiny, whether it's really huge, um, it doesn't matter. You're always going to get one radian as long as you follow the same principle where you know you start over here, okay, start over here where the circle hits the x-axis, the positive x-axis, and then move in the positive direction counterclockwise and uh, the length that you move on the circle, in other words, the arc that you make, has length equal to the radius. Okay, so this arc that you make, uh, the length of that is equal to the radius of the circle. And then connect it back. The angle that you make is one radian. So that's how one radian is defined. So notice uh, one radian is quite a lot bigger than one degree, right? One degree was really super tiny. One radian is pretty big in comparison. Okay. So that's what one radian is. So that's how we get one radian. Well, what about radians in general? Well, that's where we have to use central angles um, and subtends and subtend to buy and things like that. So let's talk about that now. <clears throat> okay, so now that we know how to define one radian, let's talk about how it's defined more generally. So we know it has to do with this arc length and the radius, right? Because remember, we trace out the arc length or we trace out an arc whose length is equal to the radius, so that gives us one radian. But more generally, so let's say uh, in general, uh, the radian measure of a central angle theta Radian measure of essential angle theta. Zoom in on that. Is uh, equal to the length of the arc subtended by theta length of the arc subtended by theta uh, divided by zoom back out divided by the radius um, of the circle so what circle are we talking about? well whatever circle that uh, theta is the central angle for okay, so remember central angle uh, the vertex is the center of a circle, so the radius is the radius of that circle there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so that's kind of a mouthful, right? Uh, so the radian measure of a central angle theta is equal to the length of the arc subtended by theta divided by the radius of the circle. So it is kind of a mess, but it's actually not that bad once you think about it. Um, but first of all, I want to point out that even though this is uh, defined in terms of central angles, um, like I think we mentioned it before briefly, but uh, you can have radian measure for any angle. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a central angle, it's just easier to define it that way. But um, you can have any kind of angle you want, it's going to have radian measure. Okay, it's, just, it's just a measurement of rotation, it's just another way to measure it. So no matter what type of angle you have, you can have a, it will have a radian measure. It's just easier to define it in terms of central angles. Okay, so anyway, that's, uh, that's that. But now let's see, so what if we convert this to mathematical language? So um, let's uh, section this off here. Okay, so uh, in general, the radian measure of a central angle theta is equal to the length of the arc subtended by theta divided by the radius of the circle. So what's the arc subtended by theta? That's this arc S, right? Or the, S is the length of that arc. So if we take the length of this arc, which is S, divide that by the radius, okay? Length of the arc subtended by theta, that's S, divided by the radius of the circle, that's R, that's gonna give us the radian measurement for theta. So in other words, theta, equals s divided by r. Okay, so take the arc length s divided by the uh, radius r, that's going to give you um, your radian measurement theta. Okay? So that's just a definition, that's where that comes from. Um, and you can use this to get what's called the arc length formula, which is s equals r theta. So that's, uh, if you have a circle with a central angle theta and radius r, if you know those, you can get the arc length s. 
But anyway, that just comes from the definition of an angle in radians. So that's one way to think about that there. Um, so anyway, uh, but more about arc length later in a different video, but for now we just want to point out this again. So by definition, the radian measure of a central angle theta equals the length of the arc subtended by theta divided by the radius of the circle. So that's why this was one radian, okay? The length of the arc subtended by this was r. So we take that arc length r divided by the radius r. r divided by r is one, so that's one radian. So that's how one radian is defined. But more generally, you know, it's, well, more generally it's the same thing, divide the arc length by the radius, okay? So just know that, that's how it's defined. Uh, divide the arc length by the radius to get the measurements of theta in uh, radians, okay? So with that in mind, uh, we can ask ourselves a question and then we'll answer that question, and then in the next video we'll do examples of converting uh, between degrees and radians. Okay, so, so we do want to keep that in mind though, so let's erase all this, but we just want to keep that in mind that uh, theta, remember for radians, uh, theta, let's put it down here, uh, theta equals s divided by r. where if we have a circle, here's a r, radius, radius, theta, and then s. <clears throat> okay, so to get the radian measurement of theta, you take the arc length, okay, take the length of the arc subtended by theta, divide that length by the radius, so that's gonna give you theta. Okay, so that's just the definition that we spent a few minutes talking about. So now we wanna ask ourselves, um, how, so we know there are 360 degrees in a full circle, how many uh, how many how many radians are in a full circle? Okay. How many radians are in a full circle? Well, we're going to use this formula here. So if we want to take the number of uh, if we want to find out the number of radians in a full circle, we divide the arc length of a full circle by the radius of that circle. Okay, so let's uh, draw another picture here. So let's say we have a circle uh, with radius r. Let's say it has radius r. Um, and now we want to know, uh, if we're talking about the full circle here, so what's the arc length of a full circle? Remember, we're, when we say theta equals s over r, we want to know the measurement of theta. We have to look at the ang or the arc subtended by theta. So if we're talking about the full circle, then the arc is going to be the entire circle. Well, what's the arc length of a full circle? That's just the circumference, right? What's the circumference of a circle with radius r? It's 2 pi r. Okay, so the arc length is 2 pi r. Because again, we're talking about a full circle. We want to know what... Uh, how many angles are in a full circle? Well, we take s divided by r. Okay, so it's no matter you know whether it's a full circle, part of a circle, it's always s over r. S is the arc length. So s is the arc length subtended by theta. Theta represents the entire circle. Okay, it's going around the entire circle. So this is s is going to be the arc length for the entire circle. Well, arc length for the entire circle just means circumference. Okay, that's just the circumference. And remember from geometry, the formula for circumference is two pi r. So s over r is 2 pi r over r. The r's cancel and we just get 2 pi. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? So no matter what the radius is, you're always gonna have 2 pi radians in a circle. So how many radians are in a full circle? Uh, 2 pi. Okay. So what that tells us then is that 2 pi radians, so 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees. Or in other words, um, let's drop the rad notation, so we'll just say 2 pi equals 360 degrees. So if we divide everything by 2, then we get pi equals 180 degrees. So in other words, pi radians is the same thing as 180 degrees. So uh, this, this is what we can use to convert between degrees and radians, and we'll start doing that in the next video. So again, just how many radians are in a full circle? It's 2 pi radians and we'll convert between degrees and radians in the next video.